Let's go to Oklahoma for our next call. Mike, you're up next on RFD TV. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, the question I have is, is does, the, does your product work better with a liquid or in a dry fertilizer? It works. It works for either one. Uh, with the dry, you've got 46 percent uh, nitrogen, and it's 100 uh, percent urea. I mean, the active is uh, is all urea, and so you have a greater potential of that uh, of that going off. And that's the reason we we use the three quart rate in uh, urea. In UAN solution, only about half of that is uh, urea, and we're just going to protect that portion of it. And uh, of course, that's the portion that you're worried about as far as the volatilization. And you only use one and one and a half quarts uh, per ton in the UAN solution. So, uh, bottom line is, Agritain will work uh, whether it's in uh, UAN solution or whether it's on urea, because uh, and we work for no matter which crop. Uh, all we're doing is blocking the urease enzyme, and we're protecting the nitrogen that you have purchased, and make sure that you're getting full benefit of the nitrogen you've purchased. Anything to add to that, Doctor? No, I would say that's uh, consistent with what we've seen in other uh, experiments as well. In our particular experiment, where we were using it, we, had, uh, we were doing some small, uh, small plot studies. Uh, in other situations where we've done this on larger fields, field-wide applications, uh, the response has been, been very, very good. And I know in many other row crops, uh, we've, we've seen a positive response in the use of UAN. All right. Again, viewers, our... Callers, our telephone lines are open and a toll-free number for you. You saw the number on the screen there. We look forward to having you give us a call and joining us on our program here with our friends from Agritain and the University of Georgia, which Tim has done from the great state of Missouri. Tim, welcome to RFD-TV. Hi, thank you. You bet. Thanks for your call. I, uh, I was just curious to know if Agritain had been used at all in uh, perennial or nursery crops where sometimes only shallow cultivation is, uh, is allowed. Uh, that's basically my question. Uh, vineyards or uh, textiles, things of those sorts. Now, as I indicated in that last call, Agritain is not crop specific. If you're using urea or any urea containing fertilizer, it is subject to that uh, volatilization and, and that 30% loss. And so uh, Agritain is going to protect that from that loss. So uh, it, it doesn't really uh, interfere, I mean, doesn't uh, lend itself to any one particular crop. It, it's, it's labeled for all those crops because we don't uh, label it for crops. We label it for the urea. Mm -hmm. I can jump in there too. In our situation in forage crops, we're typically not incorporating it in any way. Um, and so it would be very similar to uh, the situation that the caller described. Um, it, particularly, you know, the biggest risk is when we have lots of organic matter in the soil at the soil surface. We obviously have a lot of that with forage crops, and you would have a lot of that particularly in some of your nursery crop settings as well, vineyards and that sort of thing. So uh, I, would, I would imagine that it would work, uh, work very well in that scenario, although I'm not familiar with any research on that particular uh, venue. Right. And what about Jimmy? He mentioned about the, uh, just to help me out too, the depth when, when, when you're looking at shallow, impl uh, the uh, implication of that. Well, you know, before Agritain came, uh, you know, if you was using urea, uh, you had to incorporate. And that's what they were trying to do is trying to incorporate. You know, and if you get in urea incorporated into the soil, uh, you know, the volatilization, we, you reduce that volatilization. Uh, but uh, if it's not all incorporated, then that is subject to that ammonia volatilization. All right. We have less than 10 minutes to go here before we have to say goodnight, so we'll keep the telephone ringing, we hope. Again, our toll-free lines are open. I think we have a couple of lines open, uh, viewers. So, again, uh, feel free to give us a call at that toll-free number. Have you join us. And uh, we have a caller from Maryland that we just uh, we had on the line but had dropped. It gives you a chance to talk about uh, what something that another caller had asked about and had to leave uh, Jimmy, and that is if I haven't used Agritain before and I'm going to start this spring, do I want to use it on all my acres, or how would you say to get started with Agritain? Well, you know, uh, we, we know that uh, it, it would sort of depend on what, you, what your uh, desires are. If, if you're putting everything out on the surface of the soil, 
that is going to be subject to, to loss. Uh, most people don't know how much residual nitrogen they've got there. And, uh, you know, some people may want to take it uh, small steps, but uh, we, we've had a, a lot of people that have, have taken in and gone with it all the way across the, the, their whole farms. Uh, a lot of that's just going to depend on how he wants to, uh, to, to approach this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if they check around, they will probably find that a lot of people have already used Agritain and, and they will see the results that they're getting there. But when you look at how, what the cost that it's going to be to, to put it on, it's a very small cost to protect a very expensive, uh, and, and, and urea continues, or the nitrogen fertilizers continue to, to rise. And, uh, and as Dr. Hancock pointed out, when you start running those economics on the thing, it doesn't take very much mm -hmm. loss to, to protect it.